Hello everybody, this is SOD Madhaven here, bringing you my first review of the T54E2 and my first review ever on YouTube. I hope that you guys bear with me that I am not used to editing, nor am I used to talking in a mic to people I don't see. So, we're going to start off with the packages for this tank. You get a 3-shot autoloader for your first package with a 4.81 rounds per minute. It's not bad at 4.81, but it could be worse. Or it could be better. So you have a base penetration of 226, a premium penetration of 255, and a high explosive penetration of 53. Your standard damage is 360, while your high explosives are 440. Aiming time at 2.9, you can probably get that down to about 1.9 to about 2.2 depending on how your crew is trained and if you're running premium consumables. Vertical stabilizers will also help decrease aiming time as well just because your bloom is not going to be as high. 390 base view range is actually really nice. There's a lot of tanks out there like the Russians for instance that only have 380 to 360 at tier 8. So comparing those to this, this thing's going to outspot them. So Traverse speed of 30 on the tracks and a traverse speed of 28 on the turret. Those are actually really good. Being able to turn around quickly, reposition, it's nice. So jumping out, this tank also does have a single shot that I run. It has a 5.13 rounds per minute, so 0 .3, 0 .33 higher than the uh, autoloader. Your dispersion value is at 38. You're not going to be making a lot of moves, you know, going full speed, taking pop shots. Jumping over to the modules, let's take a look at the engine. So we have 16.15 power to weight ratio. That's actually really nice on a heavy tank, especially a heavy tank that has 17 reverse speed and 45 top. 17 reverse speed is going to allow you to move in and out of positions really fast taking random pop shots, side scraping if you're able to. This thing does have pretty good side armor, even though it's only 88, 76, and 50 in the rear. Even though it has a boat hull, which makes it to where you can over-angle just a little bit, but it makes them have false confidence. Your gun dispersion value is on the move at 3.08, 1.28 on accuracy on rotating turret. Rotating turret, yeah. Gun depression. This is where it gets fun. 10 degrees. 20 degrees of elevation. 10 degrees of gun depression is a lot. It allows you to work a ridge line and take care of yourself very well. 20 degrees of elevation. Anyone's above you, easy to take shots. You have got a lot of mobility with this turret. So, taking a look here. Camouflage. 0 0.9. Stationary. Moving at 0 0.5. Stationary camo rating at 0 0.9 isn't that bad. A lot of people look at that and think that's horrible. In my opinion, 0 0.9 allows you to do a lot of things. You're capable of hiding behind a bush, doubling it, maybe even tripling it, depending on how many bushes are in front. However, 0 0.9 allows you to take shots from behind bushes without getting spotted. So does Muffled Shot as a perk. 25% reduction. You, you can stay hidden. Proper off cut, for instance, all the bushes there. Perfect camouflage. At 390 view range as well, you might be able to push along the bush line and spot people out. The signal range at 745 can help you out a lot with assist damage, but we'll get into assist damage later on. So your standard shell velocity at 1080 and high explosives at 1080, loading either of those, you're going to be used to the travel, so the high explosives will hit just as much as your standards. However, the premium rounds get 1,380 meters per second. That is awesome. 1,380 is equivalent to leading a tank, half a tank in front, and he's moving at 60 or 50, and you're going to be able to hit him. The armor on this tank, really nice, really confusing. 250 turret. This turret is fantastic. I've ricocheted a lot with this tank. I think my best game so far with ricochets was over 6,000. So 160 on the sides, they're, they're never going to go through it if you're facing forward. 190 on the hatch, too, keep in mind. A couple of places, it's 190. It drops down to about 170, and then the sides of it are about 110 to 101. 
It's a really strong hatch, but don't rely on it. Don't pop out expecting them to bounce off it unless you know who you're going against. So I do have an Ace Tanker replay, but forgive me, as I said, that's jumping into a whole different area. So we're going to open up the back screen here. I'm using OBS, learning how to use it. Jumping over to the replay, we're just going to full screen this right away and hit play. I will comment over this replay. Later in the future, I am going to save this replay. I will make a new review once I learn how to edit and trim and combine. I have no clue how to do it now, nor what applications to use. Starting off, we're middle tier. I am happy that we are versing tier 9s because it makes it to where, you know, you can show how the armor works in this tank. I did have a little bit of an issue getting this recording. My computer kind of freaked out on me, which wasn't fun. And I, I seriously, I freaked out hoping that the recording got caught and wasn't corrupted. I tried playing it on the regular viewer. It didn't work, but photos apparently works. So I'm happy. And I believe that we do not have audio. As I said, please keep in mind I am new to this and struggling. So let's fix that audio. There we go. Now jump back over and feel like a complete and utter fool because I'm making so many mistakes. Hey, it's okay. It's my first try. Just kidding. It's like my 19th, but you don't need to know that. Oh, and I restarted it. See what I mean? I'm having fun. Fantastic. And this is what I mean by I was hoping the video didn't get corrupted for a moment there my computer did do a little bit of a reset but it's just the beginning parts of the battle I rush out to the center I get to the center and I have fun so it does glitch out a tad bit but the very beginning of the battle was anticlimactic for a while so we're gonna go right here let it go the T32 that's where my first shell came from and all my assist damage. That last shell that I threw into him was just to get a track and hold him down. This position that I'm in right now, located at G5, is a really strong one if you have enough gun depression. So you're capable of moving up to the left side there, having rocks in your way. Plus there's no artillery in this match. Absolutely outstanding match. So I decide to try and poke out against a tortoise, and as we all know, that works out extremely well. He does pin me. He, he breaks my gun and pins me, but and then he looks away. Going about right there. So I stopped and I looked. I'm like, okay, where'd that go through? I didn't see any marks, which as of recent, I haven't been seeing any marks to begin with. A lot of confusing shells that go through, and I can't see where they are. But he decides to turn around. I'm not going to fix my gun because of how far away everyone is. I don't need to fix it. I'm going to try and go for another lockdown shot, keeping him there. Shell goes high, doesn't lock him down, but he dies anyways. Light tank for the win. Stone cold. He gets away, but he doesn't make it. Now... As I'm pushing up, I'm trying to pay attention to my map, looking around as much as I can, trying to make sure that I'm not going to get shot from the left or the right. A little bit of lag hit me, made me scared, so I slammed on reverse. Because normally whenever lag happens, artillery hits. Well, there was no artillery this match. Took a shot from the left, probably from the E-50. Pulled down the hill. Comfortable spot. Now, I have... I was in a platoon of three at the time, so I'm playing with Blade and General. Those are the two people I mainly play with. Um, General went left, and Blade went right, just because we were like, we're in a tier 9. I'm not going to take it too serious. And well, near the end, I started to take it very serious. So I'm just going to let the replay play out.
Now pulling up to take a few pop shots at the T28. I tried locking him down. He used a repair kit to get back up. Coming out to try and get a second shot, but he got around the building just in time. There was no getting that second shot in. And then I find the E50. Now, we're one tank behind them. They have killed seven of ours, and we've only killed six of theirs so far. That first shell ricocheted, time to start loading the premiums, because 80 millimeters of sight armor at that angle, I'm going to need a little bit more pin to go through. Plus APCR. Travels faster, which means it's going to hit where I want it to most of the time. A 450 high roll. There we go. There's the high rolls. E50, thinking about locking them down. Unable to. But we're not going to let that, you know, concern us. We're just going to hold our position, try our best. Premium shell straight to the track, locked him down, plus we did damage. And a critical. So paying attention to the map now, looking at the right, hearing Blade make call out saying to worry about the right side. There's a Kongpanza and a Yuzdez back there. We're gonna take our time to take another shot and don't even know where that went. It went somewhere. Now, at this moment in time, I'm thinking to myself, why is the Bog Horror pushing up that far? And, well, he died because there's tanks on the right that we, he wasn't paying attention to. He would have been better off trying to pull back near me and coming up the left side. So, I'm loading premium here. I'm going to try and avoid as much spaced armor as I possibly can. I don't want to hit any spaced armor. Hitting spaced armor with premium rounds usually guarantees an absorption taking the time to hit the track. Lock him down, teammates are going to get a few pop shots in. Good lockdown. Tried aiming for the turret here, but I didn't pull the trigger in time. So the reload, 10.28. That's what I have right now. We're at 3,007 damage. 1,100 spot assist. We've ricocheted only 3,200. Well, <laughs> sorry, 320. Loading the high explosive because there's a lot of tanks in low health. And then, without thinking, I shot the barrel of the demolisher. Now, there's only three of us left, and this is something that a lot of people make mistakes of. You know, you see a low number and you usually think, okay, we can rush in. There's only a couple guys left. Me, I like to take advantage of that. Here comes another. He's going to rush in. I'm going to take my time finding a spot to aim. Aiming at a hatch with a premium. Oh, nope, standard. And I bounced. At least I have a good teammate that took him down for me. So we have one ricochet. Two ricochets. And kill. The side armor on this, it is good and it's bad. It's just really indecisive, but it does work. Teammate took down the E50, happy I didn't need to take that on because he would have put another shell into me, making me a one-hit period. Right now, if they low roll, I can stand a chance. Taking a pop shot, landed it. Perfect. So now, all I'm trying to do is pay attention to where my only teammate is. I'm trying to get the attention of the T-28 as much as I can, trying to get a side exposed. But, teammate bounces right off the side turret. Probably not upgrading the LTTB. If you would have shot a little bit further back towards the rear end of the tank, you would have went through immediately. Now, being last man, 1v2, little uncomfortable. I had to stop and take a breath, and I'm like, all right, we got to try and land as many shots as we can. There's one. Both enemies are on low health. I'm not even going to risk a ricochet. I'm loading the high explosive. Going to try and drag him out. And he's taken down with a high explosive. Extremely good match. 
positioning in the middle, didn't have to move around too much. Good play. And now, we're going to go ahead and jump right back into the main game. So, I'm newer to streaming, I'm newer to YouTube, and I just want to say, I want to be a part of the World of Tanks community as much as possible. There's a lot of things that I want to do. And, well, getting a little bit of a following, because I enjoy playing this game as much as some other people do. I'm, I'm about ready to hit my seventh year, and I just recently hit Unicum. I had a couple of buddies tell me that I should start doing YouTube and start doing reviews and tanks that I like, because, well, yeah, I, I enjoy the game, and I just want to share my experiences with you guys and just enjoy my time. And... If you have any questions, just post them down in the comments. I will try my best to reply. Thank you.